Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of Wild Star Reporter. I'm Chris and we are here on the last night of the closed beta as we knew it. Here to celebrate Wildstar, talk about the game, and uh, talk a little bit about the news, because that's right, launch date has been announced, and we'll be talking about that in just a minute. Uh, so as usual here, I'll be running around playing in-game as, uh, as we talk about all of the news. First up, what have I been doing in-game? Well, it's been a, a pretty uh, busy few weeks since the last show. I have... Uh, I've gotten my character leveled up. I've gotten a few more characters uh, up into the mid-teens and had a lot of fun with that. Uh, but basically my warrior has been it. I have been fooling around with an engineer. I'm still trying to decide, and I guess I'll decide uh, finally at the in the beta weekends, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, what I'm going to do as far as my main class goes. I'm still leaning a lot towards the, the warrior. And I'm really thinking that, uh, that that's where I'm going to be and be able to do tank and DPS. But the engineer still holds quite a lot of allure for me. Uh, I don't quite know what it is, but there's just a lot of me that wants to uh, to jump in and get that engineer done. So I, I, I don't know. I'm flip-flopping back and forth about that. So I finished up in Galaris, uh, got that zone all done, and as you can see from all the snow around me, I am now in White Vale and leveling through there. I've also run through STL and, and Ruins a few times and gotten that done. Uh, I'm really loving the dungeon combat and the dungeon running experience. There's really nothing uh, that I can compare it to other than raiding in other games, and that was my favorite part. So to be able to do that in more of a dungeon setting where the, uh, I guess the time commitment is less and the, the um, stress is a little bit less, I mean, that's just huge to be able to do that. So I'm really excited. Apparently I'm falling here. Woo, jetpack. Uh, and so that, that's, that's really fun. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that. I'm happy that I'll be able to do that once we get uh, launched into the game. And that's probably where I'll spend most of my time once the game has launched, is in dungeons. Uh, hopefully I can get into a, a guild that's on the Exile side that's, uh, that's into some light raiding and maybe uh, start becoming a little bit of a filler for raid groups and stuff like that. Uh, because I really enjoyed that experience in, in Rift and in, um, in WoW as well. So hopefully I can get that done uh, when Wildstar goes to launch as well. So that's what I have been doing in-game. Uh, let's move along to the Protostar newsletter. So this week's Proto Star newsletter starts with the big news of the week. That's right, launch is on June third. Uh, we're going to be in the game on Tuesday, June third. I'm really excited about that. That's about the time that I thought it would be. I thought you know early summer sort of time time frame. Uh, would be perfect because it gets us uh, post ESO and it also gets us before the Warlords of Draenor expansion for WoW. So I think it's a really, really great time. Uh, there's a whole bunch of details about the launch though coming up. Most, the, the biggest one I think is the change to a, the change in the way that the betas will be handled. First of all, there is no more closed beta. After tonight, uh, as of midnight tonight, the closed beta will be shutting down and the game will move to a, uh, a beta weekend schedule, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. Uh, now, I'm just going to bring up right here the, uh, the pre-order trailer so that people can, can see that as we're playing through here. And uh, let's take a listen to our wonderful folks from Protostar. Ah, Nexus. Shining jewel of the galaxy. A wild, unexplored paradise lost to the ages deep in the starless expanse. Well, guess what? Now you can make this alien paradise your next adventure. How? Hop a ship and enjoy the ride. Explore the ruins of a mysterious, hyper-advanced civilization. Escape galactic conflict and meet the neighbors. 
Yes, everyone's a friend on Nexus. And hold on to those self-sealing space pants because, bam, there's more! Act now and you'll get a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Your very own rocket! House! Yes, a rocket house. Is it a rocket? Is it a house? It's both! It'll make you say, look at me, I live in a rocket. So lots of information, of course, in the wonderful trademark Wildstar Wit. Uh, that's right, there are some pre-order bonuses if you decide to pre-order, which is coming up uh, this week uh, on the 18th, I believe, is the start of pre-order. Then you are going to be able to get an exclusive rocket house like they talked about in the trailer. Not only that, you are going to get yourself a housing trophy, an exclusive in-game title, The Chosen of the Progenitor, and access to the beta weekends, as well as the three-day head start, and finally, an in-game storage bag. It sounds like it's going to be 10 slots from what I have been able to uh, see, so that's, uh, that's a pretty good pre-order bonus. Uh, there will be two editions of the game that will be available at launch. There's going to be, or to pre-order, there's going to be the standard edition, which comes with, of course, the game, 30 days of game time, three guest passes with seven days of play time, and a housing decor item. You're also going to get a digital deluxe edition, which has all of the stuff that was mentioned above, as well as an Eldar-themed hoverboard, uh, Eldar augmentation costume, and a special Elden title and Elden colored die for your armor. Uh, so that's, oh wow, I keep getting damaged here. That's not good. I keep getting hurt. Uh, so that's that's the pre-order bonuses. You'll notice no physical collector's edition. That is something that uh, I was not expecting. I was expecting some wonderful pre-order with a, uh, you know, some sort of statue of some sort, which I have to say I love those. I know not everybody does. Harry Hall is not a fan over on MMO Reporter, but I am a huge fan of those. Would love to hear as I'm talking here what the chat room thinks of the different pre-order bonuses because, uh, yeah, it'd be... I, 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 I like the pre-order bonuses. I'm I'm kind of part of me is really really happy that there are no uh, no physical collector's edition because of the typical how can I put it uh, discussion within the community we'll say where players are not always happy that there are uh, that there are the physical collector's edition. What I've also had a problem with, I have bought a physical collector's edition a few times, and uh, the code that you need inside the box uh, is, you know, when I order, I'm in Canada, and it takes a little bit longer for the pre-orders to come because I usually order from online. And, uh, yeah, I am stuck usually having to get an extra key from PR or something because the, the physical collector's edition doesn't come on launch day, by launch day. It should, but it doesn't. So I'm stuck. And not having that, that issue, I guess, this time is kind of a cool thing. I mean, everybody's going to be stuck in the, same, in the two same ones. Uh, the, the costs are not that horrible. Um, typical $59.99 for the box copy of the game, as well as $79.95 for the uh, digital deluxe edition. Uh, not bad prices, um, you know, for what you're getting. I mean, some people could say that's a little bit high. Uh, we're not going to have the free-to-play discussion here. Thank you very much. That's been talked about to death. At this point, I think if you don't like it, it's not for you. If you disagree with me, uh, then Wildstar is not for you either. <laughs> so, I mean, there's really no point now at this point in discussing the whole um, free-to-play or not free-to-play, buy the box. It's going to happen. So you either need to... Oh, wow, I'm really getting hurt. You either need to decide that you're going to go for it or that you're not going to go for it. Uh, so really, at this point, there's no other choice than that. Um, the other thing that's coming out of all this stuff is that the NDA has been lifted. Uh, you're not going to have any restrictions on streaming, any restrictions on uh, on playing the game, on posting screenshots all the way up to level 50. That includes into the beta weekends. So if you, uh, if you want to stream, if you want to YouTube, if you want to post some stuff on your blog, everything is now free and open and up to you. So... Uh, you should go check that out. Oh, this is hurting. I gotta figure out how to make this work here. Um, for those of you listening to the audio version, I am in a uh, 
poison filled area and I have to figure out how to turn this crap off because it's hurting me way too much. I'm sure I can figure out how to do this though. Um, now, a lot of people have been asking about the betas and about what it means for people who have been in the betas and all that. So uh, there was actually a really great flowchart created by Quantumly Certain on Reddit. I'm going to show it to you here. And uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward in the end. Um, this is uh, pretty simply, uh, you know, you start with, are you in closed beta now? If the answer is no, then in the open beta weekends, your level cap will be 17 for the duration of beta. If the answer is yes, your level cap will be 50. So if you haven't been in the closed beta so far, you're not going to get anywhere further than 17 in the closed betas. Uh, and for those of you currently in the closed beta, do you have at least one character above level 32? If the answer is yes, you're going to have access to the four beta weekends. If the answer is no, here's the thing. Are you pre-ordering? Yes. So uh, then you are going to have access to all four beta weekends. Uh, if you are not, then you are going to have uh, the open beta up to level 17 on those weekends. Now, if you're pre-ordering, you are also going to have the head start, which is going to start on May 31st and the four beta weekend. So if you really want to get in there and uh, and get an early start on the game, figure out what you want to do uh, before the game launches, then pre-ordering and the beta weekends is the way to go. So if the chat room has any questions, please feel free to let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with this kind of scheme, although I'm starting to get a little bit more, how can I put it, a little bit more... Uh, sympathetic to Harry Hall's viewpoint of you shouldn't be selling beta access. Uh, really, what the pre-orders are doing is, you know, selling the opportunity to be in the beta, which is not necessarily a super cool thing. Um, you know, it's uh, it's it's a really weird way to do it, and it's the common way to do it now. Weird way is the wrong way to say that, but it's the common way to do it now in the game. Oh. But um, it's not necessarily the best way to do it. And, and I'm starting to, like I said, I'm starting to become a little bit more sympathetic to Harry Hall's thoughts that they shouldn't be selling open beta access. It should just be open to anyone who wants to get in there, um, not just to, to people who, uh, who are going to pre-order the game. So that's, that's kind of iffy, I guess you could say. Now, for those of you who are curious as to what days the beta weekend is going to be, uh, it's going to be on Friday, March 21st until Sunday, March 23rd, Friday, April 4th until Sunday, April 6th, Friday, April 18th until uh, Sunday, April 4th, uh, 20th, and then Friday, May 2nd until Sunday, May 4th. Now, there may be another weekend, although I doubt it, uh, in the middle of May before the head start. Uh, but there's some thought that there may be a weekend in there because that's a long time, the, the three and a bit weeks between that last beta weekend and launch. So uh, we'll have to wait and see for that one. All right, let's move on to the next topic here. The new UI that was revealed just a little bit ago. Uh, I am a big fan of this. Let me pull it up for those of you watching live here or watching on YouTube. Uh, I'm a big fan of this UI. The typical pyramid that you can see now, if I jump back to my live screen, you can see the pyramid at the bottom there. It kind of goes up in the middle. Uh, well, they're changing it now to be across almost the entire bottom, whoops, wrong graphic, the entire bottom width of the screen. Now, a couple things that they've talked about for the reasons why, and I got this from the uh, Adventures live stream, actually, when they talked about this, because they had that new uh, UI on the Adventure live stream. The reason that they did that was um, it, it would allow... Uh, more screen real estate for telegraphs and it would allow more elements more parts of the ui that could be moved around and that was a big thing for them to be able to have some customize customizability uh for the players and i i for one am a really big fan of it one of my favorite parts of it is something that i usually do uh in a lot of games is that the player um icon uh portrait for lack of a better term and the um the target one are both going to be at the bottom of the screen. 
I always do this if I can with my UI elements, if they're mobile like that, uh, because I just find that it's a lot uh, cleaner. It makes it so that my eyes don't have to travel as far to see the enemies and, and what their health is and what their effects are and all that sort of stuff. So I really, really like it, as well as the focus target right there uh, in the middle of the screen. So it's a much cleaner UI. Um, you can see some hints of it in the, uh, let me just switch back over to the game here. In the abilities now, you can see the same graphical style has been brought into abilities uh, and the way in which you choose them. Uh, much cleaner, a little bit bigger, and way easier to use. So that's definitely worthwhile. So I'd love to hear what everybody thinks about the uh, about the the uh, new UI. And uh, you can send us an email. Email will have all the information at the end. All right, next back we wanted to talk about was the Adventure Live stream, which did happen uh, just a little bit ago. Uh, this was a, a pretty cool uh, video that they put out, um, and a cool live stream like they always do, showing off some of the adventures. This time they, they, they ran uh, the Siege of Tempest Refuge, and uh, as usual, there were some difficulties, we'll say. Uh, the, the team uh, usually dies nicely once or twice throughout the run, so that was always fun to see. Uh, this one is fun because uh, you got to sort of have different sort of elements than a, a typical dungeon, not just running through killing bosses, but you were able to control some different soldiers and place them and stuff like that. So nice to see the, the, the adventures being highlighted again. Um, a couple things that came out of that and the um, and the AMA that went along with it are that um, each path, so if, if an adventure has different paths that you can go on, then uh, you're going to be able to get different loot from those different paths. Uh, and if you want to get five different, like the different pieces of loot from those different paths, then you are going to have to run those different paths until you get that loot. Uh, you're not going to be able to get it all by running the same simplest path over and over and over again. Each path will have its own distinct loot table, which I think is, is really cool because it adds diversity to running adventures. You're not going to find people min-maxing going through the easiest one just to get some sort of token or something like that that they can then use to get the gear they want. No, you're actually going to have to run the different adventures to be able to get the gear so i'm a fan of that i approve and i really like it but again i'd really like to hear what the community thinks about that uh it'd be really great to see if um if you think i'm right or if you think i'm absolutely wrong about that uh also uh wonderful david bass crb scooter uh was asked that uh, was asked if there would be some sort of UI element in the game that would show which choices had been made in adventures before, which paths had been chosen. And while that's not currently in the game, uh, it's something that is scripted through uh, through the Lua uh, software stuff. Uh, why can't I? I'm not talking correctly here. It's coded in in Lua so that you can then go in there and add an add-on that's going to have that feature in there and then an add-on could be coded to do exactly that. So if you're if you're looking for that functionality, you are going to be able to do it, but it's not going to be through the game. It's going to be through an add-on, uh, which is is good and bad, I guess. You could look at it different ways. Uh, I would prefer something like that were in the game. I mean, add-ons are awesome and stuff like that, but they shouldn't replace what the developers um, should create for the game. And I did have someone ask, and I wondered what our community thinks about this, if Wildstar is being a little bit too reliant on community uh, add-ons for some UI elements, for some different gameplay elements, or whether or not it's a good thing for them to do that. The particular person I was talking to was saying that it wasn't a great thing because they were taking sort of a lazy route by just saying, oh, the community will add that post-launch. We don't need to do it. So would love to hear what you think about that. You can send us uh, all sorts of messages. I'll have all the information at the end of the show. So that's it for our news for this week. We're going to move on now to the Advice Nexus, and we're going to talk about crap. We are going to take a look at crafting. I've got Weaponsmith and Cooking on this one, and it gives me a great idea. 
overview of what the different crafting uh, mechanics are in the game. So this is the tech tree look, and it's actually my favorite part of the crafting in Wildstar. Really gives me, as someone who's not a huge fan of crafting, a directed experience. And I can work my way through the tree as I level. And as you can see, there's different uh, levels, different tiers of crafting here. Uh, all the way from, you know, novice, all the way to super duper mega cool crafter dude. And uh, in each of those, the way these check trees work, it's, it's kind of interesting. You finish up each of those boxes to work your way down. And when you finish them, you can get a new recipe. You might get a talent point, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but... Uh, you uh, you get something, some sort of reward for finishing that. And each one of those boxes could be making four um, great swords of ass kicking or something like that uh, for weapon smithing. So it, it's really interesting. And, and then there's a quick look at sort of sort of the top end great sword that I can build. Uh, it, it is, like I said, really really cool to work through the tech tree. Um, much simpler than than I find going through schematic. But if unlike me, you like going through recipes, uh, schematics as they're called in Wildstar, you can do that as well and go through and you can show locked schematics, which ones you don't have yet. And you can also have it set to only show ones that you can build, that you have the materials for. Uh, so it, a lot of flexibility there so that you're not wasting time as you're going through the crafting. So as you can see, I've worked my way through the novice weaponsmithing tree, worked my way down through that different tech tree, through some of the different spaces, and as you can see, I built a whole bunch of those to unlock one of those. Now we're going to take a look at how to work your way through the next step. So I have got a recipe here that I'm going to build, and if I make four of those things, then I, I unlock a, a new recipe. Uh, either something for the stalkers or for the espers there. Also in the middle there you can see there's a salvage tech tree line as well. So as I'm salvaging stuff I can go through there. So you can see when you don't have the materials or you don't have the recipe yet it shows you the locked one there as I'm going through. That's useless. I can't do anything with that yet. Um, and uh, like I said we'll talk about the talent trees in just a little bit. All right. Let's get building. So I gotta build four of these things, but I'm missing, I'm missing something here. Now, all of the crafting stations actually have a vendor right nearby, and some of the, the different items that you might need for crafting are available from that vendor, so you don't have to go very far to get it. Now, they do drop in the world as well, but I don't find that they drop at a rate that's good enough to really seriously go through your crafting just at a rate that's good enough to mitigate some of the expense of going through the crafting. So if you want to power level through the crafting, expect to spend some dough. So here we go. I've got all the materials I need. I click on the start craft button. I add a core. I've already got uh, part of it in there. Um, and you have some flexibility in what you can do with the different materials. So I'm going to add a core here. And then I'm going to pick one of the different attributes that I want to uh, focus on for this particular build. I'm going to pick tech here and then I can add some charge. Now, as you can see here, I'm adding charge to, to maximize it. But as I get near the top, there there's an increase in uh, chance of failure. There you go. 1% chance of fail. Uh, that does change as you go through crafting. It's not the same for everyone. So you can't just max everything out. Let's try see how it goes here. How do I do? Hey, success. Now for that one particular level of the tech tree, I do need to make four of those. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna recraft that. Do that again. And I'm, I'm not really focusing on too much here because I am doing it just for the, um, just for the, the experience. I'm leveling up through my crafting. I don't need any of these, so I don't really care what, to, what stats the item have anyway, because I'm either gonna sell them or I'm going to salvage them. So it really doesn't matter. All right, now that that's done, I'm gonna build another one here. And uh, we'll speed through this process here. I need to do pretty much exactly what I just did there.
There we go. As a reward for that, I get a brand spanking new recipe unlocked. I can keep working my way down through the tree here, make some different weapons, uh, some of which are useful to me. Of course, uh, I'm a warrior. Not all, though. Uh, so that's that's a general overview, and most of the, the crafting professions themselves are like that, although there are a couple of diff different ones. Now, here's the talent trees that you can get. And as you unlock talent points going through the tech tree, you can get different rewards uh, for that profession, as you can see here. Um, it's a different way to do it, and as you get more proficient in that particular way, in that particular crafting profession, you get better at it. So if you go back and make some of the older stuff, you can make it uh, better, quicker, etc. Uh, and I haven't seen this in many games before. It's almost like a talent tree for your character, but now it's for your crafting profession. So it's worthwhile exploring the breadth of the tech tree and all the different things that you can do. You can see the little stars on there are ones that give you talent points for going through them. Now we're going to take a look at cooking, and cooking is a different type of crafting profession. Uh, it is a hobby, really, but it, it works a little bit differently. And you can see here, as I pick the recipe that I'm going to build, I think I'm going to build some jerky here. Um, and you don't just add things like normal. As you start your crafting, you can see as I do here, you'll have a whole bunch of different ingredients that you can add to your recipe. And these each cost a, a little bit, just a chump change amount of money. And you can see they add a target to the screen. And your goal is to get within that blue area on the screen with the different ingredients that you add to the ingredients you already have to have. You do have materials that you need to make this recipe. I think it was tough meat or something like that for the jerky here. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna add one. And then all of the other ingredients that I add are gonna start with the, the, the other ingredient as their new center point. So it moves everything around, and I gotta keep it in the blue here, so I really have to be careful about which ones I choose. So I'm a little bit out, okay, so I gotta get back in which which ingredient is gonna help me here. There we go, choose that one, that should get me back in. What, oh, that would do better, though. So you choose the different ingredients, and then you go over and you hit your craft button. And just like any other crafting item, it takes time to craft it, and there you go, you've got it. So there's a few different crafting prof professions. Uh, cooking is one. Uh, I think the architect is another, where you're working on this sort of uh, 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 targeting system for your crafting. But you can't start making stuff if you don't have the materials, so some of the stuff is locked. The other thing is that the... Uh, the crafting tech tree, the cooking tech tree, sorry, is set up in such a way that some of the, the boxes that you have to fill, some of the, the different nodules in the tech tree, are actually for getting recipes. It's not just all about making stuff. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the Wild Star crafting system. I like the tech tree system. To me, that really adds some direction for me. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a lot easier for me to max out my crafting skills, feel like less of a grind when I do have that instruction manual in front of me. Now what I don't like about it though is that as I do have to make a whole bunch of these different crafting recipes, I can't set it to make several of them at once. And I think that's a real downside to it and it's going to really uh, disappoint those who like to craft a lot because you have to make things one at a time. And that, to me, is quite annoying. That's the biggest downside, other than some of the some of the mats are a little hard to come by, not incredibly so. Um, you've got, of course, your regular gathering professions and crafting professions, mining, you know, flower gathering, etc. But uh, overall, it, it's something that is very, like much of Wildstar, is very, very familiar, while adding a few new flares that make it a little bit better than what was there before. This week on Nexus Hub, we've actually got a few different videos and uh, and bits featuring Stefan Frost. The first of which is a uh, housing 
customization overview uh, with uh, with uh, with Stefan with Frost talking about the housing. This is over at IGN now. A couple of our videos here this week are IGN related, so you can uh, you can see the good work that they're putting together there. And uh, it's a really nice video. Uh, great job showing off some of the different things that you can do in WildStar with the housing. Um, I'm I'm just always blown away at how much people can do. And to be very, very blunt, I really suck at housing in WildStar in any game. It's not just WildStar. Uh, but, uh, oh, I'm so dead. I almost killed them, though. Uh, so I'm not going to be a much of a housing person, but hopefully you're going to find a lot of people, and I, I'm sure you can already see it uh, in the community. Uh, hopefully you can find your favorite YouTuber or live streamer that's really into housing, because it's not going to be me. So you can check out this video. I'll have a link in the show notes where you can check out Stefan talking about uh, about customizing your house with the folks over at, uh, it's with Leah, I believe, over at IGN, talking about some of the different things that you can do there. And as well, uh, there's a great, great mount customization video uh, with, uh, again, with uh, with Stefan um, about the different things that you can do. And I really love this one. Um, my mounts are one of my favorite things to get in Wildstar. And uh, let me just show you here. I'll pause the, the YouTube video as soon as I've done this fight. And already, I'm just in beta. And this is beta. This is not going to last forever. I went out of my, not out of my way, but pretty early on, like pretty close to, to level 10 or so. I got as much gold together as I could. And I went and I got uh, three of the four mounts. I'll, uh, I got the grinder. Oh, right. Come on. I'm getting damaged here. Um, I got the grinder. I got uh, the, uh, the what's it called again? The Trask. And I got the hoverboard, of course, which I got with it. It is a lot of fun. And uh, you can customize them. So let's take a look at a little bit of the video. And they go into the UI a little bit about how you can customize them. Both the live mounts and the sort of technological mounts that you can get. Uh, so uh, definitely uh, worthwhile checking that out if you like mounts. If you don't like mounts, then really it's not going to really matter for you, is it? Uh, personally, I love me some mounts. Uh, and I always go out of my way to get as many of the different mounts as I possibly can in-game. So it's a pretty cool video. Um, and uh, I will show you here in the game and... Uh, Oops, that's the wrong key here. Uh, let me pull it up here. Uh, you can add different flare to your mount right here. Front flare, back flare, left flare, right flare. And you can do that with the living mounts as well as the mechanical mounts. So that's, that's really cool. Um, you can't do it with the hoverboard, the beta hoverboard, though, which is too bad. And last but not least, I'm really excited about this because I love the folks over at Yogcast. And they are doing some run-throughs with the folks, uh, you know, in conjunction with the folks at Wildstar. Um, they are doing some run-throughs. Yogcast is doing some run-throughs uh, of, uh, of dungeons. And the video that I'll have linked in, uh, in the show notes is uh, Storm Talon Flare, which I've also got some videos up for. And so... Uh, I really like it. They're, they're so hilarious. Um, and I like the way that they cover the games because they give you all the information while still entertaining. Uh, and that's something that I strive to do and don't do anywhere nearly as well as they do. So uh, that is our show for tonight. Uh, you're going to have a great, great time if you check out our sponsors. First of all, there is Doghouse Systems. Uh, choose your weapon with Doghouse Systems. They are a custom PC designer. I know I've seen a few of their computers. Uh, Carrie over at Lotro Reporter loves her Doghouse System. Uh, she just really, really couldn't do without it. Loves it to death. And you can go to doghousesystems.com and use the coupon code MMOREPORTER when you purchase your system. And you will get double your RAM for the same price. Whoa! That's crazy. 16 gigs of RAM for the price of eight. No way. Yes way. And check out audible.audibletrial.com audible, audible slash MMO reporter 
and you can get yourself a free audiobook. Now, Audible is really, really cool. They are one of the best, if not the best, uh, audiobook providers on the internet. So if you like to listen to books, I know I've got a long drive. I listen to Audible books on my drive to work. I've got about 40, 45 minutes. If you have to bus it to school, if you have to bus it to work, you take the subway, whatever, Audible is the way to go when you have run out of podcasts, which I know happens to me fairly often. You can also contact us. Check out the podcast at mmoreporter.com. Check us out on facebook.com slash mmoreporter. Send us an email, wildstar at mmoreporter.com. Check us out on Twitter, Wildstar Podcast. And you can send us a voicemail either by going uh, dialing 616-666-6778 or clicking on the widget on the right side of our homepage, and, of course, check out all of our YouTube channels at mmoreporter.com slash mmoreporternetwork. Thanks, everyone, for listening to and or watching another episode of Wild Store Reporter. Really appreciate you listening to the podcast. Hope that you listen again next week. But most importantly, we hope to see you in-game. Time to join the party. Do a little dancing. There's some uh, clothing optional choices here. <laughs> <laughs>